So we're delighted to welcome you all here this afternoon. Uh, my name is Liz. And I'm Charlie. This is Charlie. And we're also joined um, by Oscar, who is our uh, web app developer. So thank you, Oscar, for helping us out there behind the scenes. Um, and this afternoon, um, we're looking forward to working with you. Our, our focus this afternoon is on how we can best um, support parents working mathematically at home, uh, parents and carers working mathematically at home with their children. Um, you will notice that, well, you may have noticed that the Enrich website has undergone a little bit of a refresh in the last few days. I'm going to share in the web browser. Um, Oscar, could you reassure us and just give us a thumbs up or could somebody give us a thumbs up um, to let us know that you can see the web browser? It would be extremely helpful or just say yes in the chat or something. Brilliant. Thanks. Thank you, Oscar. Um, so you may have noticed that the Enrich website has undergone a little bit of a, a refresh recently. Um, we hope that uh, it'll be easier for you to find your favorite Enrich resources. Nothing has disappeared, it's all still there, but we've just had a little bit of a reorganization and we've made things a little bit cleaner, we hope. Um, but as I say, today we're here to focus on supporting uh, parents and carers. Um, so Charlie, I'm going to hand over to you to get us started, please. Okay. So shall we not share the screen to start with? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. Okay. So I suppose just to uh, frame today's uh, session, we're so used to schools encouraging parents to get involved with their children's reading, mm -hmm. um, both in primary schools, uh, perhaps a bit less so in secondary schools, but I imagine there is still a suggestion that children will uh, take books from school to read at home, that it'll be part of the routine at home. That um, And uh, I, I think perhaps parents get sent reading lists which are age appropriate, and as the children get older, they get encouraged to read different books um, at home. And perhaps this is something that, uh, again, teachers talk to parents about. And it's not clear that we do something similar in maths. And so we think that we ought to be tapping into parents' desires to help their children, to support their children, to uh, give the right messages about maths to their children, uh, to encourage their children when, when they're a bit stuck and having difficulty. And so, um, so some years ago, we worked on a problem called Solving Together. So let's now, yes, please, can we have a look at the site? Mm -hmm. And um, everybody should be able to see now uh, what, uh, the, the parents page. Um, you can see on the menu at the top, there's we've got a teacher's section, a student section, and now Liz has gone to the parent section and picked on the secondary parent section. And I thought we'd start in the second box, which is about the Solving Together project. Mm -hmm. So a few years ago, we uh, selected, I think it was about half a dozen problems that would be suitable to do, for children to do at home with a parent, a neighbor, a relative, uh, an older sibling. Um, so they were chosen because they would be sort of quite a nice activity to, to do collaboratively. Mm -hmm. And they, the schools that took part I think set these as homeworks to the year seven students in their school. And there was one every fortnight, I think three before half term and three after half term, something like that. And parents were informed about this project. They had a letter, uh, so they knew they, they knew what to expect. So there, 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 there are problems that some of you may already know from the Enrich website. Um, some of you may have tried to beat the computer and square it. Liz and I still haven't managed to work out how to do that. Um, or uh, a challenge to do with estimating angles. Some of you may know the problem frogs. I thought we might just share 
the treasure hunt. Okay. Because treasure hunt is often a problem that, uh, sorry, coordinates is often uh, a topic that is done in year seven and eight. Mm -hmm. And I suppose it makes more sense to try and engage parents when the children have just come into secondary school, yeah. set up an expectation that yeah. this is what um, they, they, they can do. It's much more difficult saying to a 14 or a 15 year old or sort of talk to maths or talk about them to, to talk to them about math if they haven't if they, they haven't been doing they're not that. used to that yeah yeah, yeah. um so the solving together project is nice there was always a video to introduce the problem mm -hmm. but since we're here we might as well scroll down and show you the interactivity mm -hmm. um and um have a go at the problem just or, or, or the beginning of the problem. Yep. Okay, so Liz, yeah. the, the challenge is this, you've got to find a treasure. Right. Mm -hmm. And the treasure's hidden somewhere in that 12 by 12 coordinate grid. Okay. And the, the you, you, you type in whole number coordinates mm -hmm. and the treasure's hidden in in, in uh, 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 with the lines crossed. Okay. So if you, Type in the next coordinate and a Y coordinate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go for it. All right. I might try somewhere quite near the middle. Um, let's go for maybe a, um, let's go for seven, seven, five, something like that. Okay. okay. And the computer will tell you, yeah. once you click on test coordinates, how far away you are. Oh, I'm quite close. You're very close. So two means you might have to go two across to the left or two across to the right. Oh, yes. Or two up or two down. Okay. But you could also be going one across and one up, or yeah. one across to the right and one down. Okay, you, okay, okay. So, so although I, it looks like I'm quite close, there are still a few possibilities here, aren't there? Yes. So I get a chance and, now to enter a new... Yes, point. and if you want to know where, you could click. So, for example, I oh, think okay. it could be at 9.5. If you click on the point 9.5... Nine, five, I agree, because that's two steps away, isn't it? Yeah. So I could put a little spot here, can I? Yes. Oh, just so that I've logged that that's a possibility. That's good, yeah. But you okay. could also go, for example, one to the left and one down. One to the left, one down. So six, four. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Or yeah. you could go straight to two up, for example. Yeah. So two, seven, seven. Yeah. So these are all possibilities. Yeah, and there's a few others that we well, we haven't noticed. Okay. So I guess I just have to choose one that I, I think could be yes. where the treasure is and pop it in. Okay, well, why don't I take one of these? Why don't I go for seven, seven? So if I choose a seven here instead and click test coordinates, oh, I've actually got further away. Um, but at least I have a bit more information now. Yeah, so you're looking for points that are both two away from the two and four away from the four. Yes. So, so for example, you could go four down and yes i could couldn't i and, and it could so be I there could, it could go down here but you could also okay. go three down and one across and yes yeah, so, okay so okay. actually the other two points that are there are still possible they are yeah okay okay anyway that that's enough to uh, give a flavor and but but what's particularly nice is that it is always possible to find there is a strategy mm -hmm. for finding the treasure in less in fewer than four goes wow yeah so that's that's quite counterintuitive possibly it's about that how nice to have something to aim for so yeah. we, we can, so if we find the treasure the computer will tell it if we've done it in four goes or more it'll challenge us okay so, so part of the reason why this is a nice activity for children to do with parents might be that it's not just about coordinates mm -hmm. it's also about thinking strategically yeah the answer is not immediately obvious. Yes. It's about trial and error, yeah. experimenting, exploring. It, yeah, it feels very much like if, if I was sitting alongside uh, my child or, or if I was with an adult, we, we'd be exploring together. We'd be, it, you know, it, there's no expectation here that the adult has got to be an expert or um, it's, you know, trying things out together. Yeah. Great. Uh, so I don't know whether we want to give everybody a chance to... Uh, has anyone got... A, a strategy for helping Liz do this in uh, in three goes or fewer. If you do, post do, do post something in the chat. But otherwise, we'll carry on. Um, and um, okay, 
So one of the things that we talk about, Liz, yeah. on Enrich, is this idea of having low threshold, high ceiling tasks. Yeah. Low threshold meaning that they're easy to step into, mm -hmm. they're quite accessible. And of course, that would be really important when children are taking a task to do at home. Absolutely. Um, but high, high, low threshold, high ceiling means that it can be more challenging. So mm -hmm. there may be some children and some parents who find this particularly easy, so it is possible to go to the cog on the top right of the interactivity and have a different level problem. Mm -hmm. So level two, for example, uses, I think, um, has a negative and uh, as well as positive yep. grid. Okay. And again, it is always possible to find the treasure in fewer than four goes. Right. So there's the challenge. That's the challenge, okay. Uh, there's a level three. Yeah. Um, let's skip straight to level four. Level four, is a three-dimensional X, Y, and Z axis. Wow. So again, children might start conversations about this mm -hmm. with their with, 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 with a relative. Um, here, it's always possible to find the treasure in 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 four goes or or fewer. So less than five goes. Wow. Even though you know we've got a nine by nine by nine grid. Yeah. So. Uh, feels like it should be harder, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Actually, because we've also got zero, I don't know whether there are a thousand different 10 by 10 by 10 different um, different points, points mm -hmm. and that you can find a treasure in fewer than five goes feels like... Okay. We're both smiling because the idea is, oh, you sort of want to have a go and you yeah. want to give parents the possibility of having a go. Absolutely. We'll come back to the solving together. Can we okay. go back to the secondary parents page? Yeah. So we, we will come back to the solving together page at, at the end. Um, but that's quite nice if um, if teachers who are here today want to encourage parents to get involved in activities that their children are doing. There is video introducing each of the tasks. Mm -hmm. I think they're less than three minutes long. Yeah. And the problems lend themselves for conversation and dialogue. And um, now we've also got a section that we developed um, a couple of, a few years ago called Maths at Home. Mm -hmm. So perhaps if we have a look mm -hmm. at Maths at Home, yeah. and there we've got um, some activities for children to do at home, um, 11 to 14 year olds, 14 to 16 year olds, 16 to 18 year olds. And uh, again, I'm gonna concentrate on the 11 to 14 year olds to start with, okay. because we want to get yeah. Yeah. parents and children while they're young and they're still talking to each other <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to, to engage. So in the 11 to 14 maths at home, there are, four sections apart from the solving together. Okay, this we've and, already looked at. Yeah, this is just a repetition. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> it's the same kind of arrangement for the uh, 40 to 16. Yeah. And I suspect it might also be for 16 to 18. So there are problems which are just to do with jotting and playing around. Yeah. There's some which to do with interactivities. There's some which uh, might take a little bit more time and some which might require some printing not because we're expecting the parents to print things, but it might be something that the teachers could give to their to the children to take. To take home, yeah. Um, so let me just think, let me just have a look. What did I think we would do first of all? I'm pretty sure it was going to be the just jotting. Jotting, yeah. Okay. Okay, here we go. And we've got half a dozen problems that feel like the kind of problems that might, that, that um, children could do with, with a relative. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at the first one, okay. make, making a difference. So in this problem, we're given the digits two, five, seven, and eight. Yeah. And we're asked to put them into a subtraction mm -hmm. in any order we like. Okay. Um, and one order is, is given to us, 57 take away 28. Yeah. So all four digits have to be used. Yes. And we've got to decide where to put them. Um, and the answer has got to be a positive, it's got to be a positive, be positive solution. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the question is, how many different positive solutions is it possible to make? Right. 
Okay. So this, this feels this feels very accessible, like we were talking about. It's kind of easy to understand. Um, and I can imagine, and as we said, this is part of the um, just jottings section. So what we need is a piece of paper and a pencil, and we can start having a go. Um, so then, so some people might write eighty-two take away seventy-five, yeah. or eighty-two take away fifty-seven, yeah. or eighty-five take away twenty-seven. And so there's a chance to talk a little bit about how they're subtracting. Yes. But there's also the need to be quite systematic. Yeah, how are we going to know we found all the ways to do that rather yes. than just some of them? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's a, a skill that seems really important, have yeah. being convinced. And actually, there may be some people who then start thinking, well, can I solve this? Without doing all the subtractions. Yes, so, I, yeah, absolutely. So I, I know that when I looked at this problem, I thought to myself, well, if I put an eight in the top left hand corner, mm -hmm. then I could put any of the three digits in the bottom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. left hand corner. Mm -hmm. So I could have a two or a five or a seven. And for each case, the other two numbers can be... So I think there are six possibilities with eight in the top left-hand corner. And I don't have to do the subtraction. No, you know that that's always going to give a positive result. But I also know that it's going to be impossible to have a two in the top left-hand corner. Absolutely. And then I've got to sort of work out something, what happens when there's a five and when there's yeah. a seven. Yeah, yeah. And this kind of conversation, again, might arise when two people are working on together on this problem, yeah. but it might not arise with the child working on their own on a set of sort of standard subtractions. Yes, yes. I, I sort of hope that parents will will not be intimidated by a problem like this. No. We're, we're very aware that par some parents had a bad experience of maths at school or feel anxious, anxious about yeah. doing maths, yeah. but that this might be... You know, they could either do it with a calculator or they could have a calculator Absolutely. check. Um, but then it would be sort of a slightly playful kind of thing. Um, if you scroll down, you'll see that there's slightly more, something very more challenging. You're told uh, that, you, that um, you can get these eight solutions, 7, 9, 11, 13, 18, 20, 20, 20. Can you figure out what the numbers were? So that feels like a real puzzle. That does, yeah. Um, you know, if you know that 31 is the biggest possibility. Yeah, what's that what telling us about, be? yeah, yeah, the, the size of the digits, the relative size of the possible yeah. digits, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and seven, mind you, if you look at the last question, which says that whenever you have four consecutive numbers, um, 31 is always the largest and seven is always the smallest. That feels intriguing. Yeah, I sort of want to get a bit of paper. Um, so, and are we told, yeah, that's interesting, because I've just noticed that the 31 and the 7 appear in the previous bullet point. Yeah. So you kind of, yeah, you'd be, would you be annoyed if you didn't read that <laughs> second bullet point before you had to go? Anyway. <laughs> so I sort of, you know, I, yeah, in my ideal world, you know, at the kitchen table, in the way that some people have crosswords that are unfinished or or even jigsaw puzzles that yep. are half finished or sudokus that are half finished or books that have got yeah. uh, a bookmark that there might be sort of oh some paper and pencil and a maths problem that they're working on every now and again and it might be something that is talked about right exactly. um, and exactly. i know i think it's perhaps a little bit over optimistic but we could I mean, problems like this, like the first one and this one, um, might encourage children and parents to sort of talk a little about so, it. Talk together about maths. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we'll say a little bit more about reassuring parents. Um, In a moment. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, I don't think anybody has... Um, offered to have a go at the treasure hunt, have I, they? No, I don't think they have. Okay, so do remember, if anyone feels that they think that they've got a strategy for solving the treasure hunt <laughs> in fewer than four goes, um, do just um, uh, post po post it on the on the chat, and we'll go back to the treasure hunt and have a go. Uh, and we'll put that on the screen, yeah. Okay. But otherwise, we'll we'll carry on. The um,
Can we go back to maths at home? Yeah. The the, the category that the... Yeah. Yeah. So on the top right, we've got some interactive games and puzzles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what's quite nice... Oh, yeah, what's quite nice about a lot of our interactivities is you get some feedback. Yes, which can be really helpful, can't it? But, well, for both student and, and adult working on Yes, that. because some parents might feel that they need to know all the answers. And so... Okay, so shall we have a look at... Um, at yeah. one of those. So what do we have? Um, oh, lots of, well, look, treasure hunt is there, but we know about treasure yes, hunt. Yeah. I like dozens because, mm -hmm. and I think parents will know about dozens. Shall we spend a minute or two? Have just a go at that one. Yeah. Have a go at that. Okay. Okay. So there's interactivity here. And, and here, Liz, you're given <laughs> um, two digits, okay. which are produced randomly. Yes. If you click on the two at the bottom, yeah. they change. So um, so you can just... Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. So you always get given two digits. Yeah. Sometimes they repeat themselves. Yeah. And your challenge mm -hmm. is to find the third digit yes. of, your, of your choice yes. and arrange them in whatever order you like. Okay. And make the largest multiple of two. Largest multiple of two. Okay. So if I have a multiple of two, okay. So I definitely don't want to put the five in the ones column, is my thinking. Um, and I guess, well, I could put the five here in the hundreds, but I wonder it would be more sensible perhaps to put a higher number here, a higher digit here than the five. Hmm. Okay, so let me try. What if I did um, nine hundred? I'm going to have to put the five here, and then I'm going to have to put the zero here. So sure. I'm pretty sure that's a multiple of two. Let's see what the computer says. Oh, okay. Okay, so that was too easy for you. And well, I still have to think. I, it might still be too easy for secondary age students, uh, but it's quite a nice start and yes. you feel... Yes. Okay, so you can go to the menu at the bottom, which yes. has got two, three, four, six. Yes. So we can go for three now. Okay. Okay, so now right. we're being multiple asked three. for the largest multiple of three. Okay. Do you know what the rule is for multiples of three? So I think um, if I add the digits of a multiple of three, that sum has got to be a multiple of three. Okay. It's also a multiple of three. Okay. So, so I'm going to change your numbers because I think oh. that, that was a little bit too easy for you. Oh. Okay, so you've got five and three now. Five and three. So five and three makes eight. So I could add, I could add, I could, I could have my third digit could be a one. Or, that would be nine. Or it could be a four. Yes. Or it could be a seven. Okay. And I'm not going to be able to add anything higher. So I think it works in my favor if I use a seven because that's going to make it as big as possible. Yeah. So seven is going to be my hundreds. And then to make this number as big as possible, I'm going to want to put the other two digits in okay. that order, I believe. Okay. You're too good for it. Ooh. Okay. So again, you can see that there'll be, and at the top of this page, there is a link to an article that tells yes. that. Um, reminds children and parents about what the divisibility yeah. tests are. Okay, last final challenge then. Oh dear, here we okay. go. Okay, yes. What is special about multiples of six? Okay, they're even multiples of three, or they're multiples of two and multiples of three. Okay, so you know what the rule is for multiples of two, you know what the, multiple, the rule is for multiples of three, so you should have no trouble with multiples of six. Yes. Go for it. Okay, let's try. Oh! No, no, click again. Oh, yeah, that? No, no, 900 is far too easy. Can I have that one? No, no, you can't have that one either. Okay, that's more like it. <laughs> no, 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 tell you what. No, let me, I, I've got hold of the mouse here, and um, I'm going to try and make it as difficult as possible for, for Liz. There you go. Okay, so I've got a one and a five so far. I'm going to need an even digit, otherwise I'm not going to be able to create a multiple of two. Okay. And that makes six. One and five makes six. So I am going to need to add on a multiple of three to make sure it's a multiple of three. So if I could add on three, but then I don't have, so six is gonna be my only option, I think. Let's okay. see what happens. So, and if I want it to be a multiple of uh, a multiple of two, the six has got to go here. And then to make it as big as possible, and I'm, I'm, um, I'm I, I think, that could be the solution. Well done. Okay. Oh, right. But you can see that this might it, be yeah. 
thought-provoking. Absolutely. Well. And again, because, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? We've said, we're having a chat as if, because obviously you're very familiar with this, Charlie. You're challenging me. But of course, in at home, this would be a parent or a carer working alongside a student, and they would be puzzling this out together. It's not about one testing the other or checking up on the other. Yeah. They could say it would be a, a team, a, a collaborative, a collaborative yeah. Uh, effort. Yeah, exactly. If you click on the purple cog, yeah, we talked earlier about low threshold, high ceiling tasks. Mm -hmm. So far, we've had a target number with three digits, yeah, and the computer has offered us. Two digits. Two digits. Yeah. It is possible to have um, a target number which is four digits yes. and be offered either two or three digits. Yes. Or well, one, two or three. But it's also possible to not only have multiples of two or three or four or six, like we As have. was on the bottom of the. Uh, but we could go for, say, multiples of 20, for example. Yes. Which is what you and I did with some primary age students yes. not long ago. So you can type in. Yes. So I, I can literally just type a number here. You can type in 20, 20 there. And then, and then go for four, four digits, digits. Then And then in the current window. Yes. Yes. There we go. So it's set so, that up for us. And yeah. you might end up with something like, I suppose. It's interesting. Multiple of 20. 9,140, perhaps. 9,140. What about 9,400? Um... 10? It's not going to be multiple of 20. No. Try 9,140. Okay, yeah. 9,100. So, you have to, this, the last two digits have got to be a multiple of 20, haven't they? Yes. Well done, Johnny. But so it's nice because. It feels that, that as well, it feels a little bit. Um, I'm relying. I'm relying less on on times tables somehow now. I'm. Do, I feel like I'm doing a little bit more reasoning here yeah. somehow, just because it's. It, we don't. We don't rehearse our twenty times table very often. Yeah. And I think that's quite nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um. And again, low threshold, high ceiling. The yeah. cog allows us to make to increase the difficulty. Yeah. I think there's lots of opportunities for talking. Yes. You and I are doing this really, really quickly. Yeah, yeah. But, but at home, at the kitchen table. If children and parents want to get uh, avoid doing the washing up, oh, I've got to do some maths. I can't do the washing up. It seems to be <laughs> a really good conversation to be having. Okay, so can we go back to maths at home? Yes. And what we haven't looked at, maths to take your time over. Yeah, okay. Um, so what I want to do is look at that one. Yeah. Um, there's one called summing consecutive numbers in the top left. Yes. And, and here you're just, you're given some numbers and you find that you can express them as a sum of consecutive numbers. Okay. So for example, 15 can be written as seven plus eight, but it can also be written as uh, four plus five plus six. Yes. It can also be written as one plus two plus three plus four plus five. Okay. And, and so on. Yeah. Um, and the idea is to find whether all numbers can be written as some consecutive right. number. There's yeah. lots of, sort of exploratory okay. thing. and there's a similar one we haven't looked at what we have for key stage four students no okay. so if we go to um the maths at home, maths at home main page yeah. and go to the 14 to 16 yeah and so maths you've still got just jottings yeah you've still got interactivities but you've also got maths to take your time over mm -hmm. and um and what's possible in the bottom left is sort of similar in terms of being able to say, oh, I can write 20 as a difference of two square numbers. I can write 21 as a difference of two square numbers. I can write th 36. Mm. Um, uh, can all numbers be written as a difference of two, mm. of two square numbers? So again, paper and pencil. Yeah. I, I seem to remember there was a girl who ended up studying maths at Oxford at quite a young age. And she said that, she always come back to, there was a blackboard in her kitchen, which is not something that is usually available. No, no, but, no. but there was always a problem that got talked about at breakfast time. Then. So uh, the idea that, okay, you may be talking about the Harry Potter book, or you may be talking about what's going to happen in, um, in in whatever book the children are reading in, at night time. But perhaps 
maths can enter into the conversation Absolutely. if there are some sort of thought-provoking engaging questions yeah. Yeah. and we hope that the section on for the parents does that yeah absolutely um i think that's all i want to do in terms of showing problems okay. i hope they give everybody an idea of uh the kind of problem that we've selected that might be useful yes um if we go back to solving together yes there there is some guidance for parents yes now you know you, why did you talk about this uh, okay so um what you'll find here is um a, a video of, of um andy who offers some general advice about how parents and carers can support their children working on mathematics together at home. So this kind of brings together lots of what Charlie and I have just been talking about. This idea that um, you know you don't you're not expected to be the expert. One thing that um, Charlie and I were talking about the other day is that sometimes we um, we have some uh, family events here at where we work in the in the Centre for Mathematical Sciences, and we have some undergraduate volunteers. And one of the things that we always say to them when we're advising them how to how to interact with the uh, school students is that it's it's their job, it's the university students' job, to question the school students' answers not to answer their questions. So that kind of, that's one of the, the bits of advice that Andy gives in the video. And I, I think, you know, it, it is created, especially for a parent or carer to watch themselves. Is that for the job, Charlie? Anything yeah. you wanted to add? Yeah, so if you're communicating with parents, mm -hmm. reassuring them in this way can, can, can put their minds at rest. Yes. That they're not that the idea is to work alongside right. the, the children mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry um so that's got the link to solving together yeah um maybe we should also show no i've changed my mind um so we do have school newsletters yes we do um do you want to just show everybody yeah. so if you if you scroll down to the very foot of any enriched page you have a link here uh, where you can sign up to our newsletter. And many of you here may already yeah. sign up to our, our email newsletter for teachers. But what you may not be aware of is the fact that we do also have one for parents. Um, and so this is something you could encourage parents at your schools to sign up for. Um, and that way they'd be kept in form of any, um, you know, re particularly relevant resources that they could work on at home with, with their child or children. Yeah, so one way of communicating about all this is through a school newsletter. Yeah. Uh, yesterday we were working with some primary age, uh, primary school teachers, and we were suggesting that in the weekly newsletter they could include a maths problem, just like newspapers include Sudokus and crosswords. Why not have a maths problem mm -hmm. for families to do uh, on a weekly basis? Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. you know, I suppose it would be wonderful to think that some parents at the school gate might be. Talking about, the, talking about the weekly the, problem. The weekly problem. Mm -hmm. Yes, because uh, what we've talked about so far, Charlie, I guess, is particularly about what the characteristics of our tasks that lend themselves to the home environment. But I guess what we're talking about now is how, how do we hook families in in the first place? So as Charlie said, this idea of, of raising the profile of mathematics through, for example, a school newsletter that you already create, or, um, or perhaps, I mean, more work involved but what about getting parents in to the school in some in okay some so some pa some teachers yes they were talking about mm -hmm. the maths learning cafes that's you know, right maths learning cafe. yes so so in those circumstances they invited parents in to sit alongside their child during a in inverted commas real maths lesson so that the parents then got an idea of the way maths is taught i guess for a start but i guess also that's a real very powerful opportunity for parents to learn about the kind of questions that you as the teacher ask your students in a mathematical environment um and it, it sort of sets the scene it sets the tone and uh, and that kind of this is what it means in our school to do mathematics which can be a very powerful message um i, I appreciate that it's not necessarily easy to organize um but it's something to to bear in mind and it might also be good at giving the message that even though when we were at school, our teachers tended to expect us to solve problems in one particular way. That's right. That 
currently there is much more of an emphasis on being able to justify why you're doing what you're doing in the way that you're doing and it may be different for different students but they need to be able to explain what they're doing exactly. and um, and justify it that's right that's so right. those kind of conversations yes seem really important. important and i guess an alternative um a context in which to invite parents into your school could be a session designed particularly for parents so you could work on a few of these activities from enrich for example with parents yourself maybe alongside their child as well you could build that into the the, the, the session um so that, that they uh, which gives you an opportunity to coach them a little bit in, in in and reassure them um i guess but if you those of you participating have ways that that you already have found to be very successful at engaging with parents in your school then do post them on the chat for us all to um hear about so that would be that would be great yes um Shall we be quiet for a minute? Well, we could be quiet for, for a minute. We'll try our best. Okay, so our, our question is, have you found good ways of involving parents uh, in maths, get, having an opportunity to talk to them so that the messages you're giving in the classroom carry on into the messages the parents are giving at home? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do post. Well, if anything occurs to you, do do you know pop it in the chat. Yeah, we could keep an eye on the chat. Yeah. Um, okay, so you might have noticed that um, on the secondary parents page, we've talked about solving together. We've talked about maths at home. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked the, about the other two boxes. I'd quite like to go to the recommended reading. Mm -hmm. um, so again, uh, English departments in many schools, recommend books that the children might read history departments recommend historical fiction or films or videos um so we've got a suggested list of recommended books as well as um linking to number file videos and mm -hmm. uh and more or less podcasts mm -hmm. that um on, on the bbc so I think, do you mind just scrolling to the top? Oh, sorry. So we've got some books which are focusing on history of maths, mm -hmm. some which are more recreational, mm -hmm. and some which are about thinking mathematically. And we've suggested an age range, um, and Liz has done something similar for primary school students. Mm -hmm. So if you are the sort of primary, se secondary link coordinator and you're talking to your feeder schools do look at the primary teachers mm -hmm. page mm -hmm. because there's a lot there are a lot of books there mm -hmm. so you have to scroll quite fast because okay, this is a quite a long list wow. yeah. of books but there'll be stuff from uh in stewart rob uh, rob easterway um there'll be uh david Aitchison there um and then, the, yes, the, there'll be stuff there for students who think of studying maths at university mm -hmm. at the end. So it starts, it's more or less age chronological. Right. Um, so there'll be some parents and children who, um, who might, uh, well, so this is all, um, this is for parents, but it might also be something to take to your school librarian mm -hmm. and say, because I'm, when I started teaching, I remember going to the school library load of English books, lots of science books, lots of stuff about sport. But really, there wasn't there wasn't anything about maths at the mm -hmm. time. And when I wanted to do something extracurricular to do with maths, it was, oh, well, run the chess club rather than start a maths club. Mm -hmm. So I suppose in the same way that we want children to do extracurricular 
sports and music and drama <laughs> and reading. I think we want to elevate the status of maths. So that, and so having maths books that perhaps parents and children read together, uh, some of them will have problems and puzzles to do. I think, um, uh, ooh, uh, I can't remember his name now. There's definitely some problems Alex there. Bellos. Alex Bellows. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's the person I was looking for. <laughs> so, uh, has a problem with it, I don't know, 100 favorite problems or something. Yeah. Fantastic to have that on, on, sitting on your kitchen table. No washing up, um, just ready made meals for, for the years. next month. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're running out of time. Yes. Uh, if we go back to the secondary parents, yeah. um, then of course there are the live problems. Yes. So we publish problem, every time we publish a new problem, we invite students to send in solutions. Yes. Now sometimes, the live problem might be about uh, a, a, a topic like, I don't know, simultaneous equations or something. And, and you're in a class as, as a student, and that is not the topic that you're doing that term. And so there isn't an opportunity to work on that problem in class, but it could be a, a problem that children could do at home. Mm -hmm. So tell, you know, sharing this kind of information with with parents could could could, could be, be could be good, mm -hmm. um, and encouraging the the parents to have a go. I know that some schools um, publicise when any of their student solutions have get published. published. Yes, if you scroll down the page, they tried that. This is our live problems and recent solutions page. So at the top are the the problems that are live that students can send solutions to. But if we scroll down, you've got there the most recently solved ones. So if you're you know if your child has recently sent something to Enrich, you could check here to see whether their solution has been published. And I think there are just a couple of other things I want to say, and yep. we're just about finishing. Just about finishing. Um, in December, we're going to have an advent calendar. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? I can very easily talk about that. We'll have two advent calendars, as we've done for quite a long time now, a primary advent calendar, a secondary advent calendar. Both of them will feature problems that we feel particularly lend themselves to being worked on at home. So some of them you will have already seen here with us this afternoon, um, but do keep an eye open for that. They'll be, as Charlie said, they'll be available from the 1st of December. And do you want to talk about problems? Yes, I can. Um, finally, you may be aware that we have just recently uh, launched a new initiative, which is called Problem Solving Schools. Um, now, this is about raising the profile of problem solving in your school. It, and in order to help you do this, we've created what we've called our problem solving charter. So we have um, sort of thought about um, some particular issues categorized uh, in, in a few different sort of strands. And one of the issues that we suggest might you might want to consider is how you engage families in their mathematics if i um click here properly there we go so this gives you a little flavor i know you can't read the text but don't worry it gives you a little flavor uh, there's a section about values and ethos leadership and professional development curriculum pedagogy and assessment custom culture and here problem solving to be beyond the classroom school um there's more information on our website and there's a link to follow should you be interested um in, in finding out more Okay, so I think um, engaging parents' homework, having displays with problem of the day, problem of the week, problem of the month, whatever, just making um, uh, maths, uh, having our posters in the classroom yeah, yeah. to uh, encourage children to think beyond just what's in the textbook, mm -hmm. taking problems home to work on. Um, are all ways that will hopefully involve the parents um, and hopefully the problems that we've selected for the parents' page are not going to be too scary. That's right. And parents often do say to us, oh, I wish I'd been given problems like this when I was at, uh, at school. Exactly. So thank you so much for participating. We want to thank... Um, Trinity uh, College here in Cambridge for funding us so that um, this event is free to you participating. We would love to have your feedback. Thank you, Ems has posted a link to the feedback form in the chat. Please do take a couple of moments to fill that in. It really helps us to improve and to give, uh, to, you know, to send a message to our funders that um, hopefully these are valued sessions. Yeah. So 
thank you very much for participating and we look forward to seeing you at a future event yes there will be a recording available it will be if you go to let me very quickly show we'll you send everybody an email. yeah you'll send you'll, you'll be sent a link to it, it but you will there will be a recording available. thank you very much